On this episode of Pedalbox, we're back to our old ways, cutting even more pieces off our chassis and building a roll cage. We're not actually removing anything that we've added onto the car. These uprights from the trailing arms are going to be staying exactly where they are and they'll be brought into the roll bar itself so that will all brace off the same way and we won't lose any strength. But all of this old tubing that's got lots and lots of holes drilled in it still is all coming off. And I'm not too sad about that because these are some of the first welds we put down on the car and some of them are genuinely terrible. So getting rid of that is, is really good subscribe to the channel if you haven't already if you'd like to check out shop.pedalbox.show on merch stickers hats t-shirts and more and if you'd like to support the builds directly you can go to patreon.com slash pedalboxshow well we're taking the engine out again so that we can get into the inside corners back here and get a nice clean cut off which we might manage this side with the gearbox in but with the engine here we're not going to be able to get in very easily so we've taken that out and it's got to come out anyway because after this we're going to flip the chassis clean underneath the floor make sure everything's welded up properly and really spend a bit of time making the chassis look a lot nicer so the only thing left now is to cut the top of the car off So that's the top of the chassis legs cleaned off and I've cleaned off this crossbar. Now what I might do is sink down through the top of this rail and mount this onto the very bottom edge of the inside of this rail rather than having it stuck on the top. Now the notches are cutting these rails for the hoop, it fits nicely in and it comes down to the inside edge at the bottom of our chassis rails. I'm also going to take out this inch box section that sits underneath it and replace that with a piece of inch and three quarter, the same as we're using at the top. That'll give a good deal of strength all the way from the bottom of the car right the way through the roll hoop and serve us a lot better. I'm not going to take out this plate completely, I'm just going to trim it back as far as I need to and I'm going to align the lower section of tube in exactly the same way. I'm just going to have to extend this out a little bit more to create a base for it to go onto and we'll seam weld around the top and then again on the bottom when we flip the chassis later. Now we've put the seat in the car and I've put my helmet on, we can measure up and see how much clearance we have and whether or not we can drop this bar down a little bit just to lower the car ever so slightly. I'm not sure whether we'll get away with it from the top of the roll hoop down to the, what is currently the highest point at the front of the car, which is a requirement for anything that's, that's open cockpit for the roll cage to have. It has to come down and not interfere with the helmet poking up above the roll hoop or, or the highest point of the car. So. Yolanda is just going to hand this in from this tyre on the right and we'll see whether or not this clears it once I've got this down. So the answer is just barely touching. So if I put it on this side you can just see there's a roundabout. There's just about half an inch between this where the helmet is intersecting with. So the helmet doesn't protrude above the roll bar and because we're going to be lifting the front up and making it a little bit taller anyway, we should be clear for that.
Now the main hoop is tacked in, we can add a couple of supports to join it onto the very bottom of the car, not just onto our main chassis supports for the engine. So I've cut this and shaped it because there's a few bits in there we just can't get into with the grinder and the files, but it's all gonna match up really nicely. So I've cut this to fit and this one goes in, when I get it the right way around, just underneath here. Now the design of this one and the way it's been fitted is so that it comes directly down underneath this tube and runs straight in for maximum support. If we'd left the inch box tube under there, it would have sat right underneath the middle of this tube and in any crushing impact, the box would have potentially just gone straight up the inside, which is no good. Now the main hoop's fully welded in and the extensions at the bottom are welded in, it's worth dealing with the elephant in the room. This is not an MSA approved or certified roll cage. However, we are heavily working off their guidelines for the materials and the design that we want to use to give this some semblance of structure and safety. On a Caterham, as you can see in this picture, the cage bolts or welds onto the top of the suspension turret, which is the part we've cut off. Below that would normally be the inch box section, which we've completely removed in this instance, and we've replaced it with inch and three quarter tube. Now there's an argument to be made that what we've done here is therefore a bit stronger than what you'd find on a standard kit car chassis, because we have the inch and three quarter tube all the way to the floor, even though there is a join and a bend in it, because it's not going through that inch box section. I don't know if I agree, but it certainly seems a lot stronger as it is, and we're still mounting onto the single strongest part of our chassis. We're still gonna be using a mandatory diagonal member across here, going from the driver's side down to the passenger side, and we're still gonna be using the same type of tubing to go from here back to the rear struts. To position the rear braces coming off the main hoop, we've got a couple of different options. We can either place it at the very bottom edge of the bend, the middle of the bend, or the top of the bend, or somewhere that works. We're going to position it at the very top of the curve, and as we're going to have a windscreen that comes up to the top here, we do need something from the edge of the windscreen onto this hoop. So we'll cut a couple of pieces off and then start fitting them onto the hoop and down onto the turret itself. So the rear stays have been cut and they fit onto the back of the main hoop really nicely and I've also squared them up from the front and back of the car to make sure that they're exactly symmetrical coming from the rear mounts onto the back of here and they fit really nicely and they do square up so success in that front. So we're going to get these tacked in and then check them all over again for square and then weld them in proper. Now we've got the back stays in, attached into the hoop, and we've seam welded as much as we possibly can around the bottom. We need to put these little plates back into the top of our chassis rails that we cut out to position this and to weld in around the very bottom of the main hoop onto the inside edge of our chassis rails. Now I've notched these round to fit the outside edge of the tube again. I'm gonna weld these back in and then cut them off straight. And then we'll be able to clean up this inside edge and finally seal this off for good. These are the cover plates that I've made to fill in this end of the chassis tube and we can finally close these off. Now these fit over nicely and just fit in like that, but I've put some primer down the inside of the tube and filled in as much as I can under here just to try and protect it from anything that might get in there and start to rust and I really don't want that to happen. So hopefully we'll get all this sealed up, painted over and this whole section will look so much better than it ever has. We've got both of these in now and I can't say how pleased I am that they're now finally closed. We've been wanting to close these off for at least a year going, oh, we'll do it when we do this, when we do that, when we do the other, and we've never got round to it. Now it can be in, it's done, never have to open them up again, he says. This will probably come back to haunt me. There's one glaring thing we obviously need to do over this side, which is cut this down. We were hoping to integrate this into the edge of the roll hoop. However, because of where the hoop has come, it's a little bit further forward than it was originally planned. We're not going to be able to attach this onto this in any sensible way. So we're going to cut this down from the top of the chassis rail out to here just to match the one at the back. This diagonal piece is the last part we need to put in in order to support our main hoop. So we've got this all sculpted out and I've magged it in place for the time being. I'm gonna tack that end, make sure this end fits and then tack this end in to match.
Check out shop.pedalbox.show for all of our merch, t-shirts, hats, and more. And if you'd like to support us on Patreon, head over to patreon.com slash pedalboxshow to support the channel. This has come together really well. I'm really pleased with how it looks, and it's actually gone in a lot easier than I thought it might. I'm also really glad we've managed to get things like closing in the chassis rails done after some 40 odd episodes from when we started and installed these onto the chassis. Thanks to all our existing Patreons and those who subscribe to the channel. We'll see you next time.